Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We love being encouraged to live out our faith in Jesus by hearing the stories of women in our church community. We are so glad that you're here. We love to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection every day, but we might love it even more at Easter. So we are taking the next three weeks this Easter to hear some testimonies of Christ Chapel women. They will be sharing when they first believe the gospel and the difference Jesus has made in their lives. May Ferguson Graves starts us off. For 60 years, May felt left behind and fought to succeed. The story of Jesus saving her is absolutely beautiful. You will love hearing my conversation with May. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. I'm Kathy, and I'm so honored to be here today with my friend May. We have been friends for a while, and I'm thankful she said yes to come join us on this episode. And May, welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm delighted to be helpful. Of course you will be. I know you and have learned from you, and I'm excited that everyone gets to learn from you as well. One of the things that we love to start off our episodes with is by asking everyone, what is a little something that brings you joy? Do you have any ideas of a little something that brings you joy? I will jump right into that because today... I got great joy from the sunshine. Yes. I am a person who loves that warmth on my back, and it just reminded me walking down the street with the sun shining on me that God's love is all around me, and it just mm-hmm. it brought me great joy. Mm, We've wonderful. had a few days of dreary and, and rain, so I, I love nature and all the beauty that is in nature. That made me very, very happy. Mm, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I love that, too. When the sun <laughs> comes out and is bright, I, I feel different. Yes. It, it does bring me joy as well. Well, May, you have had so many fun and unique and significant experiences in your life. But if it's okay, I'd kind of like to take us back to the beginning and tell us a little bit about what it was like for you growing up. Well, that's a long time ago, but (laughs) I grew up in a very small town in Mississippi. We probably had about less than 50,000 people in the town. And uh, growing up in the late 50s, early 60s, it was a a different time. Mm -hmm. And not everyone can relate to that. And I don't know if you remember the the TV show, uh, Leave It to the Cleaver, Leave It to Beaver. It was the Cleaver family. And I always (laughs) compare, that was my family. I'm I'm the baby of four girls. Uh, My mother and father had their hands full with all four (laughs) of us, but being the baby, I think I was just loved on and cared for by all my sisters and my mom and dad all this time. So it it was an idyllic time, I think, to grow up, at least in my mind. I know there were lots of other things going on, but as a little girl... It was uh, it was it was good. When I visit with my sisters, we certainly uh, talk about that fondly. Um, I think that also growing up in that way of thinking, I'm a little princess to all my sisters and and parents and cousins because I was the baby. It uh, uh it was very very uh, uh hard for me. Hmm. that when my father passed away when I was in high school. Hmm. So, you know, it was, he always took care of me and just not to have him in my life uh, anymore was, that was, that was hard for any young person. But uh, it, um, I think that experience as a young girl uh, set me up for different things throughout my life. Um you know, I was no longer his little princess. So that was kind of a hard part of my my growing up. And then that led me to uh, marry uh, my mm-hmm. high school sweetheart mm-hmm. who whisked me away. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, that's just what you do when you, you're from Mississippi. And my mother wanted to, you know, have a home and babies. And that, that was just kind of expected. So uh, I, I married and left home. But my husband took very good care of me, had two young mm-hmm. chi- had children, two children. 
Uh, but then he left us. So, you know, once again, you know, if mm-hmm. I'm telling my whole life story, it was kind of the uh, the the pattern was starting that, you know, the the protectors, the men in my life were leaving and and making it uh, a little difficult for me. <laughs> More than a little difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It was it kind of burst my bubble of, you know, I am not that little uh, special princess anymore. And I've got to get out there and take care of myself. And I think as a young mother, that realization of I I cannot depend on others to take care of me. And mm. I need to get out there, make a living for my children and take care of them. It, it set me on a road, I think, for a very um, purposeful career because mm-hmm. I, I just felt like that uh, um, solitude of being on my own was something hard to grasp at that time. So I did. I launched a, a career in different capacities, uh, mainly in the nonprofit world. I raised my children. That was my focus was to, you know, be independent, depend, and not dependent on anyone because, you know, frankly. But had it worked for you? It did not work for me too well. So, you know, I'm like, I was only dependent on myself. And uh, I think I did a very good job, but I think that also made me extremely goal-oriented and focused on on making sure that I could take care, you know, of my children. And I did. I I focused on that, doing, you know, one project after the other. Uh, But I, you know, looking back now, all those things that I did to succeed, every time I would succeed at something— it would make me feel like, is that all there? Is that all there is? I just, mm-hmm. I never was satisfied. So I, you know, I chaired this event, or I chair something, or I get, you know, made a goal, and then it was just, you know, what's next? Uh, I again, I I raised the kids until they graduated. I'm putting all my strength into you guys until they graduated, which they did. And after that time, I married again. Mm-hmm. I had a very uh, wonderful husband, uh, but two years later, he passed away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's another that, loss. Another loss. <laughs> so it was, a it, you know, that really um, – hit me and I just got even more fiercely independent and 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 goal inter- goal related for myself for my own protection I guess and I um, it, it was just a very difficult time so I think Kathy that's when I really started looking more outward of there's something else that is out there that I don't have. I was brought up in the church. I thought I was a really good person. You know, mm-hmm. I did um, Sunday school and vacation Bible school. I was even uh, president of the women's club at church and uh, taught Bible school. But I don't know that I ever really had that relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I just, you know, for and this, you have to understand, all this, I didn't come to Christ as I know him today early on. But I think there's probably a lot of people that are in that same situation. You think just because you, you do all these things with church and you're a good person, you know, we're all sinners and you have to develop that personal relationship. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have it. So when my husband died, not long after that, I uh, started, I had a friendship with a, a, a gentleman that was, he, he was, he was a godly man and made me go to church <laughs> <laughs> with him and, uh, at Christ Chapel. And the, we, we uh, were friends for years, maybe eight years and going to church and having those conversations with him made me really start 
questioning, you know, why, why, why does he have this joy and light in his life? Why do all these people at <laughs> Christ's Chapel have all this joy in their life? I want that. Mm. And I, I don't know if it was just, you know, I kept holding him at arm's length um, for a very, very long time. And um, uh, it, it was getting a little serious, but I you know, that, that's not in the cards for me. I, I I've been look, hurt multiple I've times. Hurt. I'm not doing that again. No, nope, I don't need it. But this whole thing that this this light that that I didn't have, I didn't think. I was very intrigued with it. But so we um, we broke up. Mm-hmm. He left he, for a short while. I'll preface it that way. The story's not done. The story is not done. So, and during that time, I really, I was I was going to Women in the Word and talking with all my friends and, you know, what do I do? I I don't I don't know if I can can handle this again. And so one of my very dear friends uh had a house in Fredericksburg. And she yeah. said, May Go use my house. Go go uh, sit and make have a little sabbatical of your own, some quiet time. And so I did. I, I took a long weekend and, and went to Fredericksburg, took my Bible with me, read, you know, Scripture, went through all kinds of conversations in my head. And I think just I can, I can distinctly remember the morning. I was sitting on the porch. It was kind of cool because I had a blanket on my legs and rocking, and I was reading the Bible and looking out over a pasture. And I just, you know, I just kept, you know, why am I so not happy? <laughs> why, why is there no joy in my life? Why, you know, do all these bad things happen to me? Or what is it that I'm missing? And I know, Kathy, <laughs> the moment all of a sudden, my whole body felt peaceful. It just felt peaceful. And I think at that very moment, Christ just took hold of my heart and said, May, you don't need anything else. I have it all. You're mine. I've been waiting for you for 60 years. <laughs> Turn around. I'm here. And ever since that moment, I mean, I have, I know now. I have a relationship with the Lord, and He's always there. Whenever I I, I haven't given up of all my uh, independence, there there's no doubt about that. But I have joy in knowing that it's the joy uh, of this relationship is the only thing I really need. I don't need another man. I don't need another husband. I don't need another project. I don't need another job, another big trip or anything like that, because it's just really simple. I know he loves me. He waited for a long time. It, I'm, you know, I know that when we're born, you know, God already knows who we are and what he's got planned for us. And he knew it was going to take a long time with me. <laughs> and it did, but it, uh, it all came around. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then, you know, to make the, the story even better, I have now married that man who mm-hmm. was so kind and taught me so much. Uh, we've been happily married for a, almost 11 years now and uh, go to Christ Chapel, you know, every, every Sunday and, and work in the church. I just, this is what has brought me joy in my life. And mm-hmm. I, I just going to be happier. I know that you have shared that story about Jesus saving you before, but even as I listen to it and see the look in your eyes and hear it in your voice, I know how, I almost feel like you're sharing something sacred with me because I know how significant that your salvation is for you and that the Holy Spirit did save you in Fredericksburg and it is beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. And I tell people that story all the time. And I was fortunate to be able, uh, in my profession, I travel a lot and I, I went and was, uh, baptized in the Jordan river. And it was just, 
not long after mm-hmm. this, and it's just my whole life has changed. I'm still the same May I was as a little, probably what my sisters <laughs> would say is a small brat, <laughs> but I, I, I definitely put uh, priorities in place, mm-hmm. and hopefully my story or um, the light shining from me can make a difference in someone else's life because it it took a lot of people to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was like, don't ever give up. And in fact, my favorite uh, scripture is Psalm 116, 1 through 2. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me I will call on him as long as I live. Mm. I there's so many things that I w- want to ask you, and because we're here, I'm going to. Okay, but I'd kind of like to start with, especially because you shared your story with us of men leaving and your need to perform and do it all, and then in Jesus, you found someone who's never going to leave you, and who you don't have to perform for. And so uh, you have alluded to that, but tell me a little bit more about what a difference having a Savior who's never going to leave and did it all for you has and does mean to you. Well, I think it's kind of what you said. I don't have to perform for Him. You know, I'm I'm still, you know, I still have a job. I've got to work. I've got to perform for my, my job. But, you know, in this relationship, he's going to, I'm going to fail. We all fail and probably on a daily basis, but he doesn't care. He loves me for who I am. He created me. So it's that, that comfort of knowing, you know, when others may be in and out of my life or, or not fans or are fans or whatever, that, you know, it doesn't matter. He loves me. He will never leave me. I, you know, he, he's got a, a, a firm grip on me. So it's, I think it's that freedom of being able to be yourself and, and not have to perform. Mm. So that's, you know, that comfort every night when I go home or, you know, I'm like, oh, I had some bad things happen today or I'm sorry I did this or, you know, I recognize it. He's still going to love me and he's still going to be there when I turn and ask for help. Hmm. I remember when I first met you, you, and we will get into this in a minute, you're very accomplished in the opportunities you've had in your career and very professional in the way that you approach life and your career and people. But you are also a relatively new believer, which for someone who comes to Christ at six, it is just as meaningful as for someone who comes to Christ at 60. But it's different when you're 60 and have an experience to pull from and know what it's like really palpably to live without Jesus, and then also know what it's like to live with Jesus. And I remember being around you and thinking how refreshing and joyful it was because I could see in you 60 years of knowing what it was like to not have Jesus and then know what it was like to have Jesus. And you carried it in this very special, precious way. And I think, again, it's special and precious to everyone when Jesus saves you. But because you knew what it was like to not have Jesus, I I could see in your face the peace and the freedom that the striving and the being alone and having to be guarded was done. Absolutely. And, you know, I, on the other hand, you know, knowing people that have come to Christ at a very young age, I think, too, of, geez, that's, they're so lucky. They, (laughs) they probably had struggles through their life, but, you know, I didn't have that peace and calm. And, you know, I probably burned a lot of bridges (laughs) because of that. But yeah, and uh, I've, I've heard people tell me that, you know, when you first come to Christ, you do, you just, it's you're like a sponge, and even mm-hmm. though I knew all the the Bible stories, I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know the history, and you know, learning that, and now being able to apply that to my life and understand why you know this particular Bible story, or the other is important, not just you know someone turned 
water into wine, you know, what happened in the history behind all that. It's, it's, I'm, I am, I'm like a child because it's all new to me in this, you know, what is it? They say, you know, the, the scales removed from your eyes. I finally understand it. So, yeah, I, you know, that's a great, great uh, thing at a, uh, to come to you. And I think, too, wow. If, if only, maybe I wouldn't have made a lot of the mistakes <laughs> I made before. But uh, I, I don't regret, I hardly regret anything in my life because it led me to where I am now. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing. And I've heard you say that before. And some people, I think when they say that, have a hard time believing them. I don't know if that's good or bad. But when you say it, and I've seen you, I've heard you say that before and I've watched you say that before. And I really do think you mean it. Like the Lord really has used all these things to bring me to himself. And I am grateful because that's what he used. And here's where I am. now. Absolutely. And I mean, all the the difficulties I had, you know, through that, I would not have touched some of the people that I did. And even I've had people uh, reach out to me from, from years ago that, I know he was working on me then because I was not in a relationship, but they said, you know, you really helped me, you know, X, Y, Z kind of thing. And I'm like, I didn't even know I was doing that. I don't know why, but, you know, thank you for sharing that. But yeah, he, uh, he, uh, he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Clearly Jesus is the one who saves all of us and he saved you and He's given you a peace and a freedom and a joy that you didn't have before. And he changes us. Some of it is in an instant and some of it is over time. And he grows us and he uses us. And now that you have a decade or so to look back on life with Jesus, as opposed to the previous 60 years with not experiencing him, at least the Holy Spirit wasn't indwelling you then. Tell me about what has changed in you or how do you approach your family or work or life? How did you go about approaching that differently? And what have you seen since becoming a Christian? Well, I think one of the uh, things that really come to mind immediately is, uh, you know, because I am such a strong personality, (laughs) I can be a little judgmental as, as my children will say. And, you know, just, Knowing that God loves everyone, no Mm. matter who they are, no matter if they're performing or not, it, 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 you know, all walks of life, people that I may not like particularly, He loves them. So Mm. I look at everybody and try to, you know, try to remember that, you know, when you're in a difficult situation or a difficult conversation, you know. God loves this person. I should love this person too. So I think it's helped me uh, through those kinds of situations. I'm I'm a I'm a softer, maybe kinder person. Mm-hmm. I, I listen more. Um, I'm not the 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 bull in the china shop kind of thing through some situations. So uh, that's been, I think, one of the the major things, but also just because I don't want anyone in my life, family, co-workers, just acquaintances, not to have what I've got. Mm. So I'm not very, uh, I, I can't quote scripture the way I should, and, and I'm not the teacher kind of person, but hopefully my story helps others because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want anyone to miss out on one. I don't want anyone to die and not know where they're going. So mm-hmm. that's, you know, I, I think someone said that to me once of, you know, don't you want everyone to have what you've got? And I'm like, absolutely. So I'm, I'm getting better equipped at sharing that with others, <laughs> but I'm not there yet. <laughs> and I remember you telling me one time that your kids had noticed a difference. I mean, your your children are adults now. Right. And so, but they had said, you used to be such a no mom. <laughs> and now you're much more positive. 
<laughs> well, they still say that a little bit, but <laughs> that yes, it was always they knew. I said no. They have to work me for a couple of days or so to get something out of me. So, yeah, and they, uh, I think now that I'm now a grandmother as well, to see, I think, me with their kids, to that wasn't you, Mom. <laughs> we were, what happened there? So, yeah, that's, uh, and I do, I want to be sure they have what I have, and they don't go through the struggles I had. Maybe my life would have been easier, or, you know, people could look at my life and say, oh my gosh, you had a wonderful life. But we all have things that, you know, people, you know, what is what is it they're really looking at? You, they don't see the behind the scenes and the pain and, and things like that. So uh, I want them to have that. Mm-hmm. I try. <laughs> because you talked about how much you value really looking at all people as created in God's image and want them to experience that. I was reminded your current position, which you're retiring at the end of the year, yes, but I you am. have served on Fort Worth Sister Cities International and led that organization and literally traveled the world on behalf of Fort Worth and brought people from other countries here. And you've met many dignitaries and represented Fort Worth well. But because I've known you during that, I've gotten glimpses of, yes, you were representing Fort Worth and you did it very well, to be honest, and very appropriately. But I knew how your heart was also stirred by the Holy Spirit to really want to love and treat people from all countries with the kindness of Christ. So tell me a little bit about how knowing Christ has just impacted the way you've done your work and impacted the way you've traveled the world and engaged with people from other cultures? Good question. And because of what we do is, is uh, we call it creating cultural competence among people. And that's, you know, a global diplomacy efforts, you know, to put a good face on America. So, you know, how do we do that with the rest of the world? Um, it, it it, it has changed in that I, I think I've looked, well, I get to see countries that do not have the same freedoms we have uh, to worship or to even learn about uh, the Lord. So not that I am able to, to, to share that openly because I have to be very, very careful because in, when you're in those countries, it's... Um, it can be difficult. So, you know, sh- I, the thing I've heard from so many of the people that we touch in other countries has been, you're all so friendly. And I try to teach that through a lot of my training classes is if you smile at someone, if you treat them like you're in their, that they're in your home, they're, they're going to understand that we're all just alike. We are, you know, we want a, 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 a safety. We want a home to live in, roof over our head, and education opportunities for our kids. So, sharing some of those core values, and you know, not I always caution them: don't be that ugly American overseas. And it, it's 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 some people do get to that international travel brings that the worst in some people because it's hard sometimes. So I just think sharing that love for our city, our country, and our people and getting to know those people, um, it's it's been such a joy for me. Uh, I've, I've met some of my best friends in, in other countries and have the privilege of calling them friends. And I call on them if I wanted to go travel, I could stay in probably one of, you know, 30 countries that I know someone in already. So it's, I hope they pick up on that. You know, I'm never shy if asked, you know, what our our religion is or what, you know, I believe, but, uh, you know, I can't force it on them, but I, I will, I will tell them, you know, I, I have a relationship with Christ. So... That's I have a, memories of you, which again, I love hearing you tell these stories again because I'm smiling, but I have memories of even you telling me, hey, I'm going to be in this country meeting this dignitary today. Will you just pray? 
you know, exactly. and I love that you have in really wise, discerning ways. And even just how you are training up people to go saying, we're not just here to get something for Fort Worth. <laughs> we are here to treat people with kindness. We are here to make this a mutually advantageous Absolutely. experience as much as we can. And I think your understanding of who God is and how he wants you to live and how you are embodying how God views people of all countries really undergirds all of that. Absolutely. And, you know, we've been in some, like I said, countries that are are not um, accepting of, of, of Christians necessarily, but, you know, they still are just like us and they, they have their, they could be like me when I was a little girl of just, you know, they're searching for something in their souls and hopefully we all uh, exhibit that kindness and friendship to them and uh, can turn a, a spark on in their minds. Hmm. Something you mentioned as a part of your story, both frankly before and after you became a Christian, was studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. I know you've done it here, Women in the Word, mm -hmm. and you've Again, you were studying the Bible before you became a Christian and after you became a Christian, you've studied the Bible, but that is important to you and you've alluded to that, but I want to highlight that for a second. Tell me about how and why that has been such an important part of your journey to Jesus and even walking with him. Well, I think it's just that that clearer understanding of the Bible is history. It's a clear history you know, I think we're studying Genesis right now in church of from day one, you know, there was a plan and, and, and all of the, the things that point to Christ coming. And if you, you know, if you're kind of an analytical person, if you don't understand that, it's a hodgepodge of just nice stories. So, you know, I have, I've, I've gone to uh, women in the Word for for years now, and I st went to BSF for a while. But getting the historical part and the facts and the figures and everything that m it does make sense, and then you put it all together and and understand the why. That I mean, it just it it really was. Those scales fell off, and I understood, you know, my my um, part in it all, and and what Christ did for me. I mean, you, you, you know, to, to, I had the privilege of, um, praying in the garden of Gethsemane. You know, it's Christ stood here and went, you know, to his death. And that was for me. You know, you too, Kathy. <laughs> yes, he did. Super but, grateful know, that, for that. That understanding how that all comes together. And then, you know, uh, we studied Revelations not too long ago of, you know, and he's coming back and I want to be ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I uh, I tell my, my husband last at me because I have uh, several favorite songs, but uh, one of them is uh, out of Africa. I love the continent of Africa. I love Africa, everything about it. And I love that movie. I would have felt like we failed at this podcast okay. if we, if I did not give you an opportunity to Thank talk you. about Africa. Thank you. It is, <laughs> I know it much is, you love it. It is my place. But uh, the out of Africa, the music in out of Africa is just uh, beautiful. If you've seen it, there's a, a scene in Meryl Streep and Streep and uh, Robert Redford are flying over the plains of Africa and this gorgeous music's playing. Every time I, I travel, where I don't care where I'm going, when we take off, hmm. I have my iPod on and I have that song I on. I didn't know that. And as we're and I love to fly, and I'm not scared at all. And as we're taking off, you know, that music is playing, and I see the clouds, and I'm thinking of everything. And I'm like, you know, Jesus, if I'm coming to, you know, take me now. I, I know where I'm going, so if anything happens, I'm coming home. So it's it's my, he does, he laughs at me. I'm like, look, you want to put, oh, you know, I'll give him <laughs> one of my earbuds. But it's, uh, yeah, I feel very, very comfortable and I know where I'm going to be. And just a little bit, we'll wrap up. But I know that Matt was significant in you coming to Christ. And also, you've known him your whole time of being a Christian. And so 
tell me just a little bit about how God has used Matt, your husband, in your life. Well, Matt came to Christ, I think, when he was a teenager. So he, and, and he's been at Christ Chapel, I think, from since it started. So he, from the very, you know, we, I knew him for eight years, I think, before we married. But his calm uh, explanation of things, he never pushed me. Maybe he knew my personality, <laughs> but it was, he planted seeds. He just kept planting seeds and, and, it, it, you know, it, you, and I, I, I use that example too of that's what we do. We can only plant seeds. Only, I think Christ is going to make it happen. And I had to be the one to turn and look. So he was just, he was so solid in his faith throughout the whole time I knew him, and still to this day, uh, that it just, I kept, you know, there's something here. What, you know, what is it? Not that he's perfect any more than, than I am, but he had that faith and just, he just kept planting those seeds. And finally, like I said, I I understood. Hmm. That's beautiful. Well, I know that our time has come to a close, but I would love for you to share a final thought or two that's either something you love about Jesus or have been reading in the scriptures recently or something that as you look back over the course of your life, you want people to understand or you want people to get. And certainly you've alluded to some of those things, but I just want to give you an opportunity to close with something that really matters to you. Thank you. Um, what I think I, you know, is just my guiding star kind of thing is, I mean, it's, it's visualizing, hearing the scripture, but it's the arms that are wrapped around me. Whenever I pray, I have that image of, of Christ with his arms around me. Just, you know, I've got you. I'm holding on to you. You have nothing to worry about. I love you, you know. That I can, and I, I, I uh, some, I, it might have been Cody that one time uh, during the pastor's prayer, he said, uh, he said, now visualize holding hands mm -hmm. with Christ. And when we pray, I just, I do that. I just put my hand kind of on the pew and I just feel like, you know, he's got me. He's holding my hand and it's just, you know, it's peace. It's just pure peace that anybody can have. All you got to do is just, you know, ask for it. I love that you would share your story. And I love that I have gotten to be your friend because I can testify to having seen and experienced what you have talked about in your life. The peace, the joy, the change, the humility, um, the desire for others to know who God is and to love people of all nations, whether they're visiting Fort Worth or you're visiting them. It's really beautiful to see Jesus through your life. And I'm really mm -hmm. grateful that God lets me be your friend. Well, thank you, Kathy. You, you, you make me sound much better than I am. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I do not. But I am going to close this in prayer because there is one who is markedly better than both of us, and that's Jesus. Yes. So we are going to hold his Go hand and talk to him. <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus, you have not left or forsaken me and you never will. You haven't left or forsaken me and you never will. And for every person in Christ, I pray that that would be a profound, encouraging reminder to them today that you have not left or forsaken them and you never will. For anyone listening who is like I was before I believed in Jesus or like May was for 60 years, that is missing something and doesn't have that relationship with Jesus would like you did for May in Fredericksburg, you open their eyes to respond to the gospel so that they can experience what May has, which is a beautiful, life changing, really remarkable relationship with Jesus. Thanks Jesus for what you've done for May and I and so many. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. For more episodes, be sure to follow Encouraged and Equipped.